the next interview of note is with Mark Rollins. Um, he, along with a couple of your poems, has well, I, I would style. I would disagree. Let me let me let me point out one. I think the interview with George Dickus, Dickerson that right before that is another one that's a, a really great interview. Uh, jo- George's written interview reminds me of the video interview that I did with the Genghis Khan guy uh, and also the the Oswald Spengler guy. It's almost like a performance piece. Um, uh, it, I think it shows what a kind of writer at his best George might have become had he not had a 25 or 30 year writing block. So I, I would disagree. I think the next one, George's interview is uh, a, a really great one too. He, I I. I Ding it half a star because he's a little bit reticent about uh, about naming bad you know people in the film industry. Well, George Dickerson was a notable interview. I was just skipping that one to to get to Rollins because this is a this is a um, an interview that that sparked one of another another common trope throughout your interviews, which is the River of Selves. Hmm. And the River of Selves is very nice condensed version of how a person progresses you've also has have several of your poems where you'll talk about how every three or four years the body's cells completely alter and change the person for what they are and it you mean in a metaphorical and a literal sense mm. this is this is a, 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 not just an interview but also doubles as the Bait because there are some philosophical queries where you'll disagree with him and it's really back and forth this one feels uh, very conversational and i also want to mention that Rollins has okay so we're talking about mark Rollins. i did skip the george dickerson interview yeah. it's it's good that you, you mentioned him too because it is a worthwhile interview but i want to speak about it because mark Rollins states in here and this is a common trope throughout your interviews of the river of selves you have a few of your poems too that kind of evoke that in how the cells change every three or four years and how a whole human is different after that. Yeah. Mark Rowland's interview too also doubles the debate and I think it is the most conversational way. There is a later one that we'll get to later, but the the it's the most conversational and even when you're disagreeing in philosophical senses, you really get an insight into both of your minds. This is, this is in a way a good portrait of yourself too, uh, and how you think in philosophical terms. And Mark Rowland is also a terrific writer in the sense that he can take something like it states here in the intro that he goes from Arnold Schwarzenegger and life's meaning to evil and Sisyphus. Uh, it, he'll take something that's very low, like a silly action film, and he'll raise it to a higher standard and he'll communicate it very well. So he's a excellent philosophical writer. And I put him even above someone like Nietzsche, perhaps at his height, because the philosopher and the wolf is the best distilled uh, purely philosophical take on any philosophy that I've read. It's the most well-written, it has the most posy, um, and it is, it, it is an excellent take on all sorts of things, and it's most multifaceted as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a good interview, and it, it's some he, he doesn't write in a way that that uh, uh, is standoffish. Uh, your typical college kid could read that interview and, and get something, and that's the way his books are. Like the book that got me that I found him on was on science fiction. Uh, I forget the name of the book off the top of my head, but uh, and then I read the he gave me. I think he sent me a copy of the Philosopher of the Wolf. And the wolf, and so yeah, I mean that, and and it shows that uh, you can get uh, interesting stuff, good interviews from uh, a lot of different perspectives. So yeah, that was one of the best ones too.